Hi, my name is Marie, and uh, I'm going to present a case for you regarding a market leading data setup and organization. So uh, I hope you are doing well post Corona, and uh, I'll try to make it short. I think I have around 15 slides uh, about our data setup. So let's get started. And this is me. Uh, you can connect afterwards. And when you have seen the presentations, I will be glad if you connect on LinkedIn. Otherwise, write to me at the Marie Lüge at Bonnier.dk. And then I hope to see you in the real world someday. So um, I will start to say that data is boring and it's useless and it's health and then it has no value if you don't know what to use it for. So in this presentation, I will try to show you a small slice of our data setup and how we use it to inform our decisions every day. I have worked with data the past 15 years in several different media companies. For many years, my field was called CRM, and now the field has broadened into CRM and data analytics. It is more or less the same. So if you are a business, you would like to have as high return on investment as possible. And um, that comes from taking in the new customers and uh, how good you are able to serve these customers and capitalize on those customers. We do that by monitoring, listening, and stimulating the customer's behavior in the best direction. So Banya Publication is a media company with presence primarily in the Nordic. We are mostly a print, a media company, but we are transforming into a multi-platform media company. Uh, we have 11 millions of uh, returning visitors to our properties. The future. Uh, recently, we have launched several new apps where we have digitalized our uh, formerly only printed uh, titles. That would be the Illustrated Science, History, and next it would be our uh, other titles. So let's go back to uh, how this is how our organization looked like at that point. If you wanted, if you uh, did a, an internal diagnosis. Um, what we could see in 2018 was that we had people who were pretty good on the marketing and communication side, but our products, as you can see here, were print only, and we did not in any way have the right MarTech set up to ensure speed and follow the market, as well as the customer expectations, because customers today expect that they can have content delivered whenever they want, wherever they want. So we could see that the right enablers to support our digital transformation were non-existing. So we decided to join forces with IIH Nordic, who is an awarded digital agency based here in Copenhagen, where I live. They helped us implement a new data setup to better support our use cases. Instead of all kind of different patchwork solution, we decided to build upon the Google Marketing Cloud. Our data before the new data strategy looked like this, and we had a big tr struggle with the internal data silos. So the problem when you have data like this is that you miss the opportunity that comes from having the full picture of the customers. So every time you look into one of your data silos, you get a very limited picture of the customer and maybe totally wrong picture. So what characterizes this setup is also that, you know, a customer behavior analysis, those analysis are done manually. And when you get the results, it's never in real time and it's often too late. So it's very difficult to execute on this data. Uh, but back in 2018, it was not only our internal data that caused us troubles, but also our important web data uh, caused us troubles. We had an analysis that showed us a lot of missed opportunities 
to follow the customer across our domains and in the funnel from paid to owned media. So most of the things happening on sites, they were basically out of control and often we had a low, very slow load speed. So, but uh, what is uh, important to say is that the worst part was that we could not trust data back in 2018 because we have had not had a defined strategy across our properties. So all our websites, and we have quite a lot because we're in four countries and we have a lot of uh, sites for each title, all the sites were tech their own way. So, so the picture back in 2018 was very clear. We needed to invest in our tech and data. And I mean, this is maybe where you are today in your organization. So what we did was that we, we, we knew we needed to ensure focus. And we to ensure focus, we said that our investment in data should deliver on six concrete and commercial use cases. And why use cases? Well, the obvious benefit of working with use cases in terms of data is that you minimize the risk of out of control data projects, where you sometimes kind of tend to forget why you are doing the project. So use cases are perfect to prioritize because you simply ask the question all the time, does this or that contribute to the use case, case yes or no? and then you move uh, forward. So today, what we have today is a test in class, I would say data setup. Our new data setup is based on Google 360, where all the building blocks are built to fit together. So you might question why Google and why not another off the shelf product? I will give you four reasons. First, Google is as I see it best in class, they are leading the way on marketing data. Two, our marketing organization were, our organ, organization were already relying heavily on Google's products. So it, it made it a lot easier. So by investing in the full Google 360 suite, we could build on top of the things that we already did. And for and the, the fourth reason was that it had much more perspective and less risk to, in, to invest in what we already knew in, instead of trying to mix a lot of different platforms that, that will fulfill the same purpose. So this is how it looked today. Uh, what I need to mention also is that as part of the investment, we also invested in Google BigQuery. BigQuery is Google's cloud-based data warehouse. So despite tons of data, you are able to run real fast SQL. The performance for us is unmatched by any of our internal systems. You should really look into this Google BigQuery if you are thinking about you know, gathering your data. So Google BigQuery is now the very center of all our relevant data. This means that all data that we need are gathered here. So this is our new data landscape. My data analysts, they can combine all sorts of external and internal data sources. They can combine web data with CRM data, transactional data, app data, paid media logins, and data from our new paywall. So this makes us in the CRM department and in all other communication parts of the, of the company able to follow, a cost, follow customers across channels, across platforms, and we can track behavior and nudge to the fully uh, exploring of the products across devices. So we can follow the customer from website to app and so on, and we can all, all the time track what they're doing, what they're reading and so on. And then we can monitorize this and we can communicate in order to stimulate their customer journey. So when we have gathered all our data in Google BigQuery, we are able to follow, our, follow customers and it provides us with the full 360 view of the customer. The perfect thing is that data can easily be accessed and activated in the different channels through Google Cloud Function. On top of all this, we use Google Data Studio to visualize 
our insights and make data available throughout the organization. Uh, another funny thing is that we can see that Google BigQuery has been a kind of a pacemaker for our old systems because all the their old systems have, have tend to be more relevant now that they are feeded with much better data. So instead of, you know, go and change the whole system landscape, we have kind of changed the thing in the middle and all the other uh, systems around are performing much better today. I'd like to also tell you a little bit of our practical use of machine learning models. For us, machine learning is now part of our business. It's not something that we talk and dream about. It's part of our everyday business. So with all data collected in Google BigQuery, we are now able to do analysis and predictions on a much richer one-on-one -on -one level. So this is Illustrator Science, and this is our paywall. The paywall um, should show the visitor that content are limited. But what we want to do is that we only want to you show the paywall to those subscribers where we predict them to be highly likely to converse. Otherwise, we want them to just go around on the websites and read a lot of more articles because that will make them more happy about the product. So, and of course, the paywall should also exclude already uh, ex existing subscribers, just letting them, letting them in directly. In order to serve the right message within the paywall, you know, welcome here, you can read or buy here, you convert or try and that this and that. We have used the machine learning model um, to serve the right message. Our first model was based on a neural network. It was a really good start, but it has a, it was, of course, as it, when it's a neural network, it was a black box. And what we tended, what we could see was that we needed to uh, understand a little bit more what is going on and adjust. So we since made our own adjustments using a decision tree model to better understand the parameters fitting into the model. So we keep improving the model and the model which is being trained right now gives us a score with around 95% prediction, uh, I mean precision, of course, uh, in order to find out which visitor is likely to convert and who is not. So the, the, the score on the individual user is being calculated in real time and it's refreshed for every page view. So the score, you can say, determines the journey and whether to see the paywall or not. The likelihood to convert is a score between zero and one, and we divide it into five segments. So the person you see here on the right uh, in the code, you might see that the person is not likely to convert yet, and therefore we allow this person to read a, a few more articles because then we know or we predict that the person will be more happy about our product. And for us, that will maximize the probability of buying, which is what is, it's all about, really. And this uh, slide shows you just that we are monitori monitorizing all the time. We measure sales from the paywall and we present it in Google Data Studio. So we make the knowledge available an insight available throughout the organization in order to adjust communication, adjust, adjust the pricing and so on. And of course, also adjust the, the things that we do within the conversion rate optimization department. We compare impressions with uh, paywall and conversions and so on. And we analyze the different traffic sources and how different traffic react to the paywall we analyze uh, current subscriber behavior and so on. Um, and all this, if you remember our six use cases, all this contribute to the use case around data-driven inventory management. So we work much more actively with our inventory today than we did back in 2018. So uh, to wrap it up, our data now enable us to think in user journey and execute accordingly. 
we engage with content through various medias, video content on Facebook and YouTube, articles in newsletters, SEO, Google Ads, and so on. Some content are paid and some are organic. So when we use paid media, the audiences are qualified through our CLV data in order to have dif differentiated bidding. And that we do that on the predicted lifetime value. On occasions, we may even exclude existing customers because we predict that these will not be a good business for us to work with. All traffic are led into our sites where the machine learning algorithm determines the commercial user journey in real time. So depending on the score, you will have different user journeys. We either allow the users to try the product by consuming content, or we ask for email, or we may even display the, dis the paywall. So when the paywall has been showed and we do not see a conversion, then we will send the person an email afterwards, an automated email that will arrive 24 hours afterwards, uh, trying to convert the consumer once more. And of course, in the end, we will also do the remarketing on different uh, social media channels, of course. So it sounds good, I think, uh, but we still have challenges. Of course, we have. We have challenges as every other organization. We have a lot of challenges regarding we need to be much more professional around using login on all our sites. Uh, we have something around our skills because a new data setup sets new requirements to the to the persons and the the um, you know the whole staff and so on that we have the right roles in our organization. We need to hire a lot of new people. We need to educate a lot of people. Uh, but it's something that you can work with. What is a little bit more different, uh, difficult is the mindset, because the mindset for me, as I see it, is far the toughest thing to deal with, with at all. Because right now we have the best data in class. We have all the data you need. Uh, but you need to work with it. You need to have ideas on how to uh, capitalize and use it. And as I said in the beginning, data is useless and it's boring and with no value if you don't have the ideas and mindset in how to use of our results. Yeah, this was the slide, I'm sorry. Uh, results, yes, our conversion rate with the new data setup has increased. Uh, we have we are much better in terms of uh, recognizing the, the individual on our side and our intake through Google uh, has seen quite a, a good numbers. So we are very happy about that. So yeah, I would just uh, yeah say thanks for now and um, Please reach out if you want to have any questions or want to talk or some something like that. Have a nice day.